Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I wanna share a few thoughts today just about the navigating the political season that we're in right now. And of course, as Jesus followers, I hope you are approaching this election, thinking about it through a biblical lens and making good decisions as you vote, but that's actually not what this video is about. And I know also that for many of us, Proposal 3 is at the forefront of our minds, and it's just so important in this election. And I hope you are able to catch uh, Pastor Jeff's comments about Proposal 3 in last weekend's sermon uh, on Daniel chapter 3. If you didn't catch that, I invite you to go check that out. It's very, very helpful. But again, this video is not about how we should vote. What I want to talk about today is how we think, how we speak, and how we act in relationship with each other during this political season. And here's why we need this. Because you got somebody in your small group who thinks differently than you do. And there's going to be somebody sitting around the table with you next month during family get-togethers who is going to vote differently than you. And you got this neighbor who put this political sign in their yard, and it's a political sign that you would never put in your yard. How do we navigate these relationships? This is what I want to talk about today. And what I have for you is three words that I think will help shape our words and our interactions with these people in this political season. So the first word is the word hope. Now, as Jesus followers, our hope is in Jesus. In this political season, Jesus is our savior. Jesus is the rescuer. Jesus is king. Our hope is not in a political candidate, a political party, or even a specific political system. And the deal is, regardless of how this election plays out, I mean, whether you are just elated with what happens or despondent with the outcome of this election, the truth is that Jesus will be on his throne and his church will endure. And historically speaking, the church of Jesus Christ has thrived, even under opposition, even under persecution. And so let's remember where our hope lies during this political season and where it doesn't. So that's the first word, the word hope. The second word is the word respect. Now, I want to share with you uh, some scripture that's been shaping my thinking during this season. And it comes from uh, 1 Peter. So Peter, of course, one of Jesus' disciples, and he's writing to believers living in the first century under the oppressive Roman Empire. And here's what he has to say to them. He says, Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to the governor's who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong or to commend those who do right. And then verse 17, he says, Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. That last two words, honor, three words, honor the emperor, I think was probably pretty hard for the first century believers to hear. It's talking about the emperor of the Roman Empire. The guy, the emperor who forced you to worship him as if he were a deity. The emperor who persecuted you and your church. Yeah, honor that guy. <laughs> I gotta believe this was a little challenging for the first century believers. But I think this principle is really important for us because there are candidates, there are leaders that we disagree with. We might disagree with their policies, we might disagree with their tone, we might disagree with their lifestyle. And you know what? Maybe we should be disagreeing with them based on you know, approaching politics from a scriptural perspective. But here's the challenge. In your disagreement, you still need to honor that leader. And I just believe that choosing to dishonor in our words uh, a leader that God has placed over us is, is also a way to dishonor God. I think the two are connected. And so I would challenge us in this season that in your disagreement, because of course there's going to be candidates that we disagree with, we need to be careful that we speak about those leaders, about those candidates, and about the people who are going to vote for those candidates. We need to speak about them honorably and with respect. I think it's so important because we're representing Jesus and his gospel with our words. So the second word I have for you is the word respect. Now, the third word is the word unity. And I just believe that there is something that God cares more about 
than the outcome of this election. And that is the unity of his church. And uh, where I get this idea is a prayer that Jesus prayed near the end of his life. It's recorded in John's gospel. I mean, he, he's about to be arrested, and here he is praying passionately and urgently. And what is he praying about here at the end of his life? He's praying for his followers. Listen to this from John chapter 17. He says, my prayer is not for them alone. And he's talking about his disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So he's talking about future followers of Jesus. And I would say, including you and me. And what is his prayer for us? That all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. See, the deal is that Jesus is wanting, he's praying for the unity of his followers. He wants our unity to reflect the unity that he experiences with his Father. And this is, this is so important to him. This is what he was praying for at the end of his life. And I think this is important, not just for the universal church, you know, like all Christians out there in the world, but also specifically for Ada Bible Church. Because the truth is, uh, we're different. I mean, there's a lot of different people that call Ada Bible Church home, and we come from a lot of different backgrounds. We have a lot of different perspectives. I mean, there's people here that drive Chevys, and there's people here that drive Fords. And there's people here that they like to root for Michigan State, and others that root for Michigan. We even have a campus pastor who roots for Ohio State, which I do not understand, but anyway. And of course, politically, we have people from our four different campuses that are going to vote in different ways. All I'm saying is there is a lot of opportunity within our church for division. And the truth is, at the cross, there's just, there is just more that we have in common that could ever divide us. Because at the cross, we discover that every single one of us, regardless of where we come from and what we believe, we are all broken. And we are all loved. And we are all offered forgiveness. And through the cross, we discover that despite our differences, we're brothers and sisters. We are family in Christ. And so the challenge here is to think about what we have in common rather than what we have that divides us. And this is so important, not just that we would get along better, not just that there would just be more peace in the body. It's so much bigger than that. I mean, returning to this prayer that Jesus prayed for us, he said, I have given them, talking about us, the, the church, the glory that you gave me, which that is a big statement, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then, here's why, then the world will know that you sent me. So what this is all about for Jesus is that when we show unity, just like Jesus and his father are unified, we will show the world that God sent Jesus. There's just something about the unity that we can display in Jesus, despite our differences and the ways that we think differently. We can show the world that Jesus is real, that he has the power to transform lives, and that he can create a unique community that's really only explainable through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, friends, that's the opportunity that we have in this political season. And so, in your small group, as you interact with somebody who is going to vote differently than you, that just looks at the world differently than you do, my challenge for you is to do the opposite of what is natural. Because what's natural is to create distance, to move away, to, to kind of, you know, separate yourself. Because it's uncomfortable. You think differently. I want to challenge you to move toward that person. I want, I want to challenge you to, to extend friendship, to, to listen to their perspective, to hear their story. Because there's an opportunity here for us to display unity in such a way that the Grand Rapids area would just go, now wait a second, what is going on here? Because the power of Jesus, has, it's the power to create a unique community that's really only explainable through the gospel of Christ. And so friends, uh, as we close up this little video here, we have such a big opportunity in front of us in this political season to be the people that Jesus is calling us to be. I hope this has been helpful, and I pray that God grants you wisdom as you approach this election.